It's a Jesus word. It's a Jesus word. A world of goodness.
like that, Stephanie. I like Faithful Friday. I like Favor Friday. I usually name it. Yay. Just as you made it here, all the way from Indonesia. I live in a Jesus world. Oh, I love, I love, I love the Jesus world. A world of mercy. A world so kind. A world with peace of mind. I live in a Jesus world. Those words are just pounding in me. Oh, I love, I love the Jesus world. A world of tenderness. A world so kind. A world of hope and peace of mind. I love the Jesus world. It's all I can pound this morning. All my electricity went off a few moments ago, and I paid twenty-five thousand dollars for a generator that guarantees it'll come back on, but that didn't work either. So we had to forgive us. My clock here shows eleven nineteen on this Favor Friday. But this. Give me a few moments to catch my breath of everything that's kind of gone backwards a little bit this morning. I live in a Jesus world. Oh, I love, I love a Jesus world. A world of tenderness. A world so kind. World of mercy and peace of mind. I live in a Jesus world. That's the world I want. I'm not in the hate world of the of evil people. I love the presence of God. That's that's a powerful little song. I'll share with you. If you were my if you were my son or if you were my daughter I would tell you some basic things in life nothing is ever as it first appears I'd also have protective conversations with you I found myself upset a few weeks ago because as I looked back, my mother and father were the best people on earth, but they thought everybody else was good too. It was a major mistake. Major mistake. If you were my son and daughter, I would tell you nobody is ever as they first appear. Nobody stays. Nobody stays who they are in your presence. There's always a third voice. I remember a situation where somebody in my family came back home from school and they were talking so odd. They were talking like, oh, yeah, oh, what, what? Ugh. I couldn't hardly really understand them. And I thought something's crazy. Then one day their friend came over to the house with them. And when I went to introduce myself to the friend, he was talking just like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I thought, wow, that's what happened. The person in my family had been around them at school. When they came back, they talked different. There's some basic things to know in life that everybody in your life has a third voice besides yours. Everybody has a third voice besides yours. Everybody is hearing 
information different that you're not listening to, that the people, your family around you. My mother said it took three months every summer to get the children back in line. And she said, all of you change 180 degrees when you go to school. That's big on my heart today. You're not somebody's only influence. Stop and think about that for a moment. We think it's us and them. And they're hearing all kinds of words that we don't know they're hearing. I personally think it's horrifying for any child to go through a public school without the dominant voice of the Bible in the environment. I think it's, you don't know what they'll ever become. But I want to emphasize this for a few minutes in our mentorship moments today. it's not goodness, it's evil. I don't think there's any in between. I think either you're pure with God or you're evil. I don't see an in-between at 78 years old. I don't see anybody in between. We think there's real bad and there's real good and there's all this in between. Here's what I'd like to share with you. By the way, I'll be 78, April the 18th. And I'm already planning to buy my own cake just in case. So I don't have to be disappointed. What are my dominant thoughts at 78 years old? <clears throat> my dominant thoughts is that Good people, trustworthy people, are worth staying close to. There are very few. I think we have greatly overestimated the goodness of the world. That's why there's murder, rape. I believe that when you're in the Christian faith and you're around church people and just church people and good five or six, ten good people, you think, that's the way the world is. It's my opinion that we think the world is like our Jesus world. It's not. And I wish my mother and father would have prepared me more. But I, the other side of that is maybe it's best they didn't. Maybe it's best that they just simply kept me in God's presence. And I got accustomed to that and I didn't want anything else. Listen to these words again. I love the Jesus world. It's the only world I love. I love, I love the Jesus world. The world of mercy. The world of truth. The perfect world. For me and you. I love the Jesus world. It's the only world I love. I love the Jesus world. I don't like the world of Russia. Bombing little baby schools with little children. Thousands dying. I don't like that world. I don't like the world of Russia bombing. 3,000 pastors in Ukraine to kill all their, their families and their churches. I don't, I don't like that world. I like the Jesus world. I like the Jesus world. I like mercy, but I like repentance. Jesus hung between two thieves during his crucifixion. One cursed him. 
one asks for mercy. Jesus didn't try to preach to the bad guy. He left him alone. But he responded to repentance. I respond to repentance. I respond to repentance. When somebody's repentant, what's the proof of repentance? Payback. I'm sorry. I'll make up for it. Repentance is much more than, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No. Zacchaeus, after having one meal with Jesus, repented. And what was the proof of his repentance? I had a meal with Jesus. The proof of his repentance was, I will pay back four times everything I stole. An apology is not proof of true repentance. Payback is proof of true repentance. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll do better next time. I made a lot of mistakes. That's tricky. And I am totally intolerant. Trying to see some who are here. Cindy, Deborah, Terry, David, Nancy. I can't see everybody's name, but I'm trying to. Stephanie, Vernon, Jacques, David. Thank you, David. I love those words. David writes me, thank you, Dr. Mike, for helping me fulfill my destiny and calling in Christ Jesus. Fredell, I've missed you. Glad you're here. Joyce, it's Favor Friday. Those are good questions. My protege from Indonesia is a young man that really has encouraged me, he calls me his encouragement. He's encouraged me. How do you approach making difficult decisions? Collect options. Collect options. Collect feedback from at least three people. The Bible says in the multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. I'll make this a question and answer session if anybody wants to ask a few questions today. At 78, I may have part of an answer for you. What makes a decision difficult? One of the most important decisions, justice, is uh, how do you confront someone who's lied to you you suspect they've lied to you. One thing I didn't learn until the year, last year, 77 years old, I thought confrontation was an attempt to preserve a relationship. I've discovered at 77 and 78 that confrontation guarantees a lifetime retaliation. Not only do I think no one, no one changes through confrontation. No one changes. Pharisees didn't. Absalom didn't. Judas didn't. Nobody changes through confrontation. Conversation, gentle. But I found this out the hard, hard, hard way. That any time you confront somebody about a, a lie they told or something bad that they've done, no, no, there's been a misunderstanding. All they have to do to take control of a confrontation is, oh, you misunderstood something. That's not true. That's not true. And you are shut down. 
When did I find that out? 77 years old. I want to say that again. Confrontation is almost always, always, always unwise. One of my sisters One of my sisters was talking to my dad in her house and daddy was telling her to be careful about television, that television really could have a a bad effect on her, to be real careful what she watched. And my sister's husband went to the room and brought back a shotgun and put it next to my daddy's head, right in his face, and said if my daddy didn't leave, he would kill him on the spot. That's confrontation. If there's anything I'm learning, it's some very basic scriptures, family. I want to remind you that I started traveling full time at 19 years old in 92 countries, 58 years. I want to remind you of who I am. I want to remind you of who I am. A man who loves the Bible, a man who's preached since he was eight years old, and I made my share of mistakes. I want to remind you that the wounds of life have an impact. Some of the basic things that are big to me now one of the scriptures that stand out to me, he said, when you, when you sense that you're talking to a fool, what's a fool? Uh, anybody that won't listen. Anybody that won't listen to you. He said, when you're talking to a fool, stop conversation. Don't go any further. He didn't say, go to prayer. He didn't say fast three days. He didn't say start singing to him. He says, separate. What's the biggest mistake of my lifetime? Justice. I've got three major, major mistakes. One is not studying the truth about other people. If I like somebody, I like them. No matter what they do, I just like them. And that was a major mistake. I didn't test the history and the backgrounds of them. How do you test somebody's goodness? Who's their best friend? Who are they trusting that you wouldn't? I am not a very discerning person, but I made the mistake of thinking I was. That's probably the major mistake of my life is overestimating my uh, wisdom, my discerning, thinking I could pick up on anything. Oh, if they're bad, I'll know it. Self-confidence is dangerous. Makes you blind when you love yourself too much. Makes you very blind to who people are. Second mistake is not asking enough questions, internal or outward. Not asking enough questions about somebody. Another thing that's really important, I want to only talk to protégés for the rest of my life. I have no interest in the entire world. I want to find people that discern me, that discern my caring. I only want to be about serious learners. I only want to be around serious learners. 
for the rest of my lifetime. That's all. That's all. Serious learners from me. People who want to learn from me. That's all I want. I don't want to reach the whole world. Billy Graham couldn't do it. Noel Roberts couldn't do it. Oh, Mike can. I want to limit my life to receivers of the Word of God, the Bible. I wouldn't argue with an atheist for 13 seconds. I'll let his... I'll let his mistakes teach him. There's two ways to learn people and pain. Those who can't learn from me will learn through their pain. There's a pig pen up ahead. Let him go. The most important scriptures right now in my life, my personal life at 78, or he said, when you are in someone's presence who doesn't show you respect and honor, shake the dust off your feet. One of the most important things in my life, I think, is stay in the fragrance of gentleness. Stay in the fragrance of gentleness. I have a major weakness right now, and that is studying past experiences with disrespectful people. It's a mistake because it gets me off the track of praise. I'm fighting back on it, fighting back on it. But if you'll find yourself studying bad people, who's bad? Anybody that doesn't admire your goodness is evil. I want to put that down again. Anybody, anybody who does not admire your goodness and your passion for God, anyone that doesn't admire that, Goodness discerns goodness. Goodness discerns goodness. But evil is threatened by the aroma of goodness. Lynn is sending me a $78 birthday seed all the way from London. Oh, Lynn says, I'm sowing a seed towards your cake. I celebrate that, Lynn. I value that. Valerie, Bill, I'm so glad that you're here. Brandy, Zachary, I've missed you. Priscilla, Kyra, I'm still excited over my radio program with Heaven 600 and iHeart. I'm trying to get some more time. Find out my radio teaching is grace. Joanna, I miss you. Alicia, thank you for helping me build the Wisdom Center. I treasure that. Jasmine, those are precious words. Those are healing words. I love the Jesus world. I love, I love the Jesus world. Can we? I kind of like that. I don't want it to compete with this here. Maybe drop it a little lower. These are beautiful, though. I'm going to, yeah, just drop it a little lower there. I live in a Jesus world. 
Who oh, I love, I love the Jesus world. A world of goodness, gentleness, a world. Who oh, I love, I love a Jesus world. That song just pounds in me every morning, every day. I love the Jesus world. I live in a Jesus world. You say, you must don't read the papers. I don't. You must not be watching TV. I don't. I live in a Jesus world. Bring me the broken. Make me healing oil. Bring me the broken. Lord, I know that's what you made me for. Oh, let me lift up, let me lift up the fallen. Wipe the tear stains away. Oh, bring me, bring me the broken. It's a song that's big in my heart. My mother's favorite song that I wrote was Make My Life Count, Lord. My life count. I'll pour the oil, Lord, where the wounded are found, and I'll turn on the light, Lord, where the darkness abounds. Make my life count. life count, Lord, oh, make my life count. There's a book that's available today, free. It's book 897, book 897, Seeds of Wisdom on Joy. If you want to write that down, if you call 855. Yes, book. 855, yes, book. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Ask for this book on joy. Here's some of it, and I'll share some if you'd like to have it. Your trust circle is your goodness circle. Your goodness circle is your safe world. Your trust circle, people that you can trust. People who know your weaknesses and still love on you. Your prayers are the bridges over troubled waters. I can't listen to that song without bursting into tears. Like a bridge over troubled waters, I will lay me down. Like a bridge over troubled waters. Well, your prayers are the bridges over troubled waters. Your imagination is your master every single day of your life. It controls your focus. It decides conversation. And it creates your new plans. The Holy Spirit will whisper a change today. A whisper, a change. Small but glorious. Journal this. Listen for the inner whispers of the Holy Spirit. Your answers are coming today. The wiser you become, the less combative you will be. Isn't that powerful? I 
I like that. I like that. Let's go with it. I will probably move my, my. I don't know if I'll keep my book number there, but I love that. This is Session 12 today. Oh, I like that. You did it. Yay. This is the session today that I'm doing. Mentorship Moments with Mike Murdoch, Volume 12. And today's the 12th session. Tyra says she's listening every night to my radio program. 8 o'clock there in Baltimore, New York. 8 o'clock in Georgia. 8 o'clock. I'm so glad. Question. Felicia asks, what are three indicators that a man is sincerely interested in a meaningful relationship with a woman that could possibly lead to a long-term friendship. In my opinion, three things. Daily contact, a daily phone call. Number two, serious questions about your goals and dreams. Number three, a way to bring you joy. When a man is serious with a woman, he's looking for admiration, and he'll do anything to be admired, including buy gifts. Lynn's asked the question, what are the main keys to inspiration? What do you love to do most every day? What do you love to do most every day? My number one desire is find wisdom keys. That's my number one inspiration every day. Obviously, my my wife is, but in the in the flow of life, what do you love to think about? What do you love to talk about? What do you never get tired of doing? I never get tired of learning. I never get tired of learning. And if I'm with someone who really listens, I enjoy teaching. I enjoy teaching. Trying to read everybody's work. Cindy, thank you. I treasure that. Cindy said last night, well, he just disappeared. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Said, uh, last night a man rejected my offer to pray for his son who was struggling. He made a face and said, I'm a comedian. Cindy, I've experienced that. And uh, the bridge into a relationship like that. I've learned, never ask people, do you mind if I pray? Because I've actually uh, had them say, not right now. And I'm, I'm so hurt by it, it's so disrespectful that I react to it. Be able to try to anticipate. And what I've learned is, let's say the son was in the hospital or just say, I immediately go into a prayer. Father, that's the way I open. I don't give them a chance to say no because if they say no and they, if I'm insulted, I react. Let's put it that way, Cindy. When somebody insult me, I react. I react. So a lot of times, by the way, don't worry about that. The guy's a fool. The guy's a fool, and you saw it immediately. The good thing about your offer to pray for him, and he he acted like that, the good thing is 
you know who he is now. And you could have waited a year before you ever found out who. The marvelous gift of a fool's conversation is they remove all doubts of who they are. They remove all doubts of who they are. That's There's always a benefit. There's always a benefit when you have a conversation with a fool. You find out who they are. It could have taken you five or ten years. There's people that I didn't let talk long enough so I didn't find out who they really were. Let's see, who's next? Kyra, the, my radio teaching is the best teaching I've ever done in my lifetime. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Miss Viviana, my attorney, wrote me, and she had heard me on the radio, and she had a good observation. She said, your mind is not on anybody's faces. Nobody's mind is on your face. So the spirit talk is pure. Very interesting. My my lawyer for many years, who never sent me one invoice, Miss Viviana Cavada. I haven't seen her in several years now, but she she and I stay connected over things, and she's brilliant beyond words. But she wrote me that. She said, I've been listening on the radio. And there's a different anointing. And uh, this is rich in my mind. If anybody knows a Christian radio station that might have time for sale, I'm interested. The radio is so pure. I speak 29 minutes. I have 30-second intro, 30-second ending, etc. But it's rich. It's the richest teaching I've ever done in my lifetime. Kyra, you made that happen for me on Heaven 600, Baltimore. Heaven 600 and iHeart. iHeart Network. Deborah says, remember the Cheesecake Factory, Red Velvet. You just reminded me, and I had forgotten all about that cheesecake. Red Velvet's my favorite cake. But also, I have to watch my sugar. Lynn, I love those words. I love those words. I love the Jesus world. I love the Jesus world. I've been opening up my radio program sometimes with that song. Mark, I've thought about you many times since we talked. Mark, stay in peace. Stay in peace no matter what. Never be the retaliator. And those that's been around you, Mark, for months and years, they don't value who you are. There's a gentleness. Y'all pardon me a part. Mark, there's a gentleness in you that's not normal. It's not normal. And it's glorious. And uh, I'd like to keep up with you. I know you're very, very busy surviving right now, but I would like to say a good word for you to preachers so that you could Mark the best people the best people have the worst enemies the best people on earth have the worst enemies. Relax. Relax. Bad people find good people unbearable. Don't ever forget that, Mark. Kyra writes me, I enjoy, I truly enjoy on the radio every night I listen to you. The songs at night brings peace. 
I just wish you could be on a little bit longer at night. I hadn't thought about that. Let me think on that. I haven't thought about that. Let me ask them if they, I don't know what the cost would be. I like talking longer because I can stay in the flow and when I'm teaching, many, God brings many ideas and thoughts and uh, memories to my mind that become useful. Thank you for mentioning that about being a little longer. I appreciate that very much. Can you move the uh, Sports International up a little bit so I can read the question? We have been embezzled and robbed so much while trusting. Does word promise a seven times payback? They weren't sincere if they don't pay it back. No apology is sincere unless they pay back. None. I've had three major embezzlements plus, plus, plus. Valerie, in Mike Murdoch's opinion at 78 years old, seven out of ten people will steal anything they can when an opportunity arrives. And I'm being very generous with my praise here. Seven out of ten, seven out of ten people will steal from you when given an opportunity. Eight out of ten will lie to you and never bat an eye. Look you straight in the eye and lie. That's my 78 years. Brother Harold said, my mentor, did you change your time here? No, all of our lights went out, Brother Harold. All of our lights went out. And so that delayed. I'm still working with 11 o'clock. But we sat here in the dark. Nothing was working. Johnny, Lynn, Ghana's here. Blanca's here. I can't see every name, but I'm trying to. Wow, it's already 12 o'clock, huh? My 27 minutes are up. Let me show you ways to sow to our ministry, and I want to say again, book 897 is absolutely free upon request. I sow books every single day of my life. Why? To me, they're the most important thing. What you don't read, you will never know. What you don't read twice, you will never remember. What you don't hear, you will never, never know. I am a mentor at the highest level. Mentors concerned about the success of others. Very different than a teacher. A teacher is information oriented. A mentor is relationship oriented. That's my difference from many teachers. I'm not a teacher like the normal thing. I am a mentor, and I'm kind of realizing that now because I get very upset when somebody goes through pain. A teacher can walk out of the room and never see you again and doesn't care. A mentor longs for your protection. I would say teaching is informational, and mentorship is protection, very protection, very protective, very protective. Cash app, so into our ministry, our PayPal, Zale. If you want to screenshot that, please do. My 24-hour day number is I noticed it doesn't say seed name in 
seed now anywhere. I hate that. I'm sorry. But 855 5 Wisdom is workable. Phone texting. Wisdom Center Church. Post Office Box 97, Colleyville, Texas. Go to my website. Many people show through our website, and you can do it safely. But Nate, wisdomcenterchurch.com. If you want to screenshot that, feel free. Cindy says, how do we know where to move? And when do you know it's time? Cindy, I've lived in two towns for the last 46 years. Both of them were full of devils, full of demonic spirits. Full of demonic spirits. I should have never stayed where the Wisdom Center was in the city where it was. One of the worst cities on the earth. One of the worst cities on the earth, full of demonic spirits and people. When to move? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I will say that I never knew until the last, I would say the last year, that cities had evil spirits over them. And you'll find out. I could tell you, if I told you everything, if I told you what my experiences were. Just this morning I was talking to my inner circle, telling them had I known, but I had nobody to discuss that with. The only scripture I held on to was Psalms 23, that he would set a table for me in the presence of my enemies. And that's where I lived since I was 36 years old, in the presence of demonic people. Good question, though. I don't know the answer, how you'll know when God wants you to move. But the difference in cities is a thousand percent. Brother Harold, I love those words. Best mentor, I love that. And you're sending a double seed of honor. I treasure that. Valerie said, you're the only mentor we have ever had in 50 years. Valerie I never accepted that I was a mentor to the last few weeks. I never saw it. I didn't want anybody to think I was trying to make them a protege. But the last, I'd last, about the last three weeks, I realized my heart was very different. You can be a good preacher like my father but not be a mentor. A mentor is very relationship. There's no such thing as a silent mentor. Example, yes, but not a silent mentor. I am not a silent man. Never. When I see something I don't agree, I have to bring up the truth. I I have a passion for truth. Valerie, I will say this. I haven't met one person in my lifetime that loved truth as much as I did. Not one. Not one. I will pay any price for truth. I will talk until truth emerges. I'm not saying there isn't. I'm saying I haven't met anybody obsessed with truth. That's why I bought 13,000 books trying to search for the truth. 13,000 books searching for the truth. Friendly people are not always truthful people. Wisdom key. Friendly people are not always truthful people. I've got people I love very much, but I know they're liars. And you love them? Yeah, they're likable. But I know they lie. People in my bloodline that I know lie. Every family has a snake. Every garden has a snake. And I'm very, very slow in discerning a snake. I don't know why. I don't know why. So 
Priscilla said, well, oh, again, I love that oh. Priscilla, I love those words. Oh, again, I received more books from you. Thank you, Pastor M.M. Tyra said, you've been my mentor for 37 years. The mentorship thing is really growing in me, family, and I'm going to start calling this more mentorship moments. And uh, I never was free with that because I thought people were thinking I was trying to put a finger in their face and make them a protege. I would never, never, never force receiving that. Never. But lately I begin to realize I'm, I'm so protective of good people. Valerie, Valerie, I have a real affection for both of you. You're not normal. I wish I, I wish I could convey that the way I feel it. I love your countenance. Valerie, when you listen, when you listen with all of you, your trust shows on your face, Valerie, just so you know. That's very healing to me, very healing. Justice says I'm recording your answers on my OneNote app. Son, I, I really want to meet you someday. I'm not able to be around people a whole lot anymore for a lot of reasons. And I can't go into it. It's not anything you'd be really interested in knowing or hearing, but I'm not able to be around many people much because of certain sounds. Uh, my ears are, have been affected through an MRI. By the way, MRIs are very dangerous, almost destroyed me. Remember that when they do an MRI. Something I would like to warn you. Try to remember when you go to medical health that they're experimenting. I was never taught that. I thought a doctor and nurses were geniuses. I thought anybody that knew what I didn't know was a genius. And at 78 years old, six years of hell, six years of hell with my health, and I use that word freely, H-E-L-L, and carefully, six years. Six years. I thought doctor's offices were healing centers. They're money centers for sure. But I will say this real carefully. Out of six years, I met two doctors, I believe, out of six years. Many days in hospitals. They're practicing. They're practicing medicine. And they are serious about that word. Serious about that word. I'm thankful for them. I'm grateful for them. But uh, a doctor's office and a hospital is not where you go for encouragement. You hope to get it, but don't count on it. I want to say to some of you who are discouraged with church and you're down on a pastor, I'd like to give you a pastor side of things. Pastors have to contain so much knowledge about people that they can't discuss. That's hard. When pastors have counseling sessions. They have to keep all of that even from their wife because their wife could accidentally tell her best friend. And every best friend has another best friend. It's hard for a preacher to contain information and not react to it. Very hard. I will say this. 
try to get back into church. Not because you need the pastor, but he needs you. He needs you. Not your tithe. That too, but not that. I've never touched a penny through the tithe of the Wisdom Center Church family. I wouldn't let him give me a paycheck every week. I wanted my seed to create my world. I'm going over time, but bear with me. Because while I'm while I can be with you, I want to. While I can, I want to. I want to urge you not to steal the tithe from God. I want to urge you. Wherever God directs you, and guides you, you tithe there. Tithe where you trust. Don't tithe where you don't trust. Don't tithe where you don't trust. But tithe is real serious, family. I asked myself one day, if I was a billionaire, would I still teach tithe? I'd probably do it five times more. I'm reluctant to talk about the tithe because the tithe is the scriptural way that ministers are kept alive. But I want to say this. It's real serious to steal from God. Okay? I don't care where you tithe is. That's between you and the Holy Spirit's boy. But oh, family. Don't, don't play games with the tithe. Don't play games with the tithe. I beg of you. I plead with you. Stay real. Do I believe that a non-tither will go to heaven? Of course not. Of course not. If you robbed from a bank, would you go to heaven? D.L. Moody said if somebody will steal from God while he's looking at them, imagine what they do in your house when you weren't there to see them. You say, Mike, I'm scared. I can understand that. I've been there. I'm scared that I won't be able to pay my bills if I tithe. My thoughts are that tithe is not really to give God spending money. It's to give God proof that you trust him. Proof that you trust him. Several pastor friends of mine have construction companies. They have other companies, and uh, so they don't talk about tithe. And I have a major regret in me that I have not ever emphasized. The word tithe means 10%. I've not emphasized the tithe enough at all. Ever, never did. Why? Fearful of criticism. Fearful of criticism. Give me a moment here. Fearful because no preacher ever wants to be thought of as in it for the money. One preacher came to me and says, I don't ever talk about tithe because I'm afraid people think I'm preaching for the money. I said, are you? If you are, get out. You'll know. You'll know. So let me stop here. Stephanie, what's your favorite song? 
Oh, I have several. But one of my favorite, favorite songs. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let my words heal the heart that hurts. I want to spend my life mending broken people. That was my favorite for 20 years. What's my favorite now? I love the Jesus world. I love the Jesus world. A world of kindness. A world of peace. I love the Jesus world. I love the Jesus this world, a world of miracles, a world of love, the perfect world for me. That's getting to be my favorite song. I love the Jesus world. I love the Jesus world. That may be my favorite. I don't I just have hundreds and hundreds of songs. One of my favorite songs is You will be happy, Holy Spirit at my house. I promise you will smile most every day. Things will always go your way. Anyway, that's one of my favorites. Have we showed my birthday giving? I want to make sure everybody that wants to gets to bless me in a special way. Kind of funny it is. The PayPal is a serious, trustworthy so far. PayPal and Zale. Let me pray a little bit over your harvest. I'm finding more scriptures than I've ever found about God's uh, God's reward system is money. And I'm shocked by it. We all know, you know, Malachi 3, Luke 6, 38, Mark 10. We all know those. But I'm finding new ones I've never noticed before. But Money is a reward system in the universe. In the secular world, money is a reward for the kind of problem you solve. The problem you solve decides which level of money you receive. But I want to say this with my heart. There are people who've gone bad becoming obsessed with money. Money can easily become a substitute for your prayers to God. I won't get into that right now, but let me just say, be real careful about your money world. And to me, I don't think God arranged for tithe to be the key to preachers around the world. Now, if there was no tithe, there would be no pastors. I know that. But I believe the tithe is to authorize God to do business with you. Tithe is the only proof that you have faith and trust in God's character. I believe that's the only proof that you trust the integrity of God. That's me. What has shocked me is the conversation between Peter and Jesus. 
That stunned me. Peter looks at Jesus and said, Since I've been traveling with you as one of the twelve, I have no money. That's kind of open it. What I love and stunned by is that Jesus didn't say, You'll make heaven and I've got streets of gold for you. Jesus didn't say that. He looks at Peter and said, I'm going to work with you on a hundredfold return in your house, your real estate, and your land, and your friendships. I'll pay you back. I am intrigued by that. I have never in 78 years, ever, ever, ever heard a sermon on the hundred bow return. Referenced occasionally, very rarely. Almost nobody I know really believes the words of Jesus. Almost nobody I know. Do I? Kind of. I kind of do. I work with it sometimes. Did he really mean that? Then where was all Peter's? Houses. I have a lot of thoughts about that. But Jesus told Peter, you and I are going to do a money trade out. Whatever you give up to help me in the ministry. He said, I will see that it comes back one hundred times. Is that true? In my life, Let God guide you in your money world. Let God guide you. Let God guide you. He can give you one decision. I dreamed a lot last night about Rod Parsley. Haven't seen Rod in a number of years. By the way, he's one of the best people I know. One of the best people I know. I got to tell you something kind of funny. First time I went to preach for Rod, I sat by this real pretty girl on the front seat. And the whole time I'm sitting there, I thought, boy, she is a looker. I, I may ask her on a date. So at lunch, Rod said, Did you notice the girl you were sitting by? I said, I sure did. He said, uh, we're dating. We're not engaged or anything, but he said, I've, I've dated her. What do you think about her? I said, I'll put it this way, Rod. If you don't marry her, I will. <laughs> and he nodded, talked about her. Within 14 days, they were engaged. She's a looker, Joni. Very gentle person, very gentle. But I dreamed about Rod last night, and I thought I would tell you one more miracle again that happened with Rod Parsley. I had 8,500 left. It arrived Thursday before I went to preach for Rod on Saturday. It was all the money I had, and I won't go into all the details. It's hard to walk away from money. It's hard to walk away from money. And the Lord spoke to me that night to help buy Rod a house. And I gave my whole $8,500. And I've told this numerous times. And I couldn't talk to people for about seven days. I don't think I said five paragraphs to five people in a week. I couldn't talk. I felt like an idiot. For giving all my money. Four times it's happened in my life. $8,500. $8,000. Not a penny. Not a penny in my savings account. Not a cent. I may have had a few dollars in one of my accounts. But nothing in a savings. And I said to the Lord. I gave that $8,500.
because I thought that's what you wanted. If I missed your will, I'm an idiot. I'm a fool. Forgive me. And the Lord spoke to me a sentence that stays with me every day of my life. Anything you do in an attempt to obey me will not go unrewarded. Anything you do in an attempt to obey me will not go unrewarded. One week later, 14 days from my seed, God gave me some ideas in prayer. High Ridge Hotel, Wednesday morning, 7.15. I remember it like yesterday. And I wrote those ideas down. Told a businessman friend, he said, I'll give you 10% of the profits if you let me take those to stores. We signed contracts with Kmart, Walmart, and Hallmark. My first check. My first check from the Walmart connection, those three books, those three, my first check was $106,000 plus. My first check. Sometimes God can give you one idea and it's your lifetime income. From that, from my first check, I bought me a Rolls Royce. And I gave my Rolls Royce to a preacher later that I love a lot. Everything we have came from God. Everything we have came from God. Ideas. Cautions. Protection. Jojo Banks from the United Arab Emirates. You're from Dubai. Boy, that's a gorgeous place. I've been to Dubai about three times. Jojo, Dubai is the most beautiful airport in the world. Thank you. That's hard to believe. Right here at 1230. At 12.30, on Favor Friday, JoJo Banks is watching me from Dubai. That's that, that affects me. I value that, son. Danielle from Brazil. Danielle, I found the love of my life. Rosana Cristina. The love of my life in Brazil through Twitter. As soon as I saw her eyes, trust jumped in me, and I said, that's a woman who will never lie to me. She will always tell me what her feelings are. That's precious. Tara, I miss seeing you. Cindy says, thank you for staying overtime. Cindy sent me a birthday seed of $78. Cindy, I didn't realize your birthday was one week before mine. Oh, I would have tried to flesh you. Priscilla says you're a generous man of God. Only God could put that in our hearts, Priscilla. I was generous when I was 12, never changed. I think a little foolish a lot. I uh, greatly overgave. I greatly overgave. But at least, at least I, I followed what I felt like was from the Lord. Jojo says, I want to tap from your grace, Daddy. Son, what really helps me is reading Proverbs and Psalms the first three hours of every day. 
and I would urge you to, there's a lot of the Bible. Hold on one second. There's a lot of the Bible that's not joyful. A lot. A lot. But look for the good verses. Let me see if I can give you some of them. Ready? Be still and know that I am God. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Now the scripture I said last night, probably 30 or 40 times, is come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. I will give you rest. And I quoted that maybe 40, 30 or 40 times last night before I went to sleep. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your soul. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Matthew 11. My yoke is easy, my burden is light. Find a scripture that impacts you and read it over and over and over. Valerie, that's a very good question. Where is it okay to tithe? I asked the same question this morning in my own life. To pastors, ministers, evangelists, food banks, independent preachers, outside of church, he just says the storehouse. I was trained to believe that the storehouse was where you got your spiritual food. I was trained to believe that whoever fed you spiritually was your storehouse. I don't have a good answer to that, Valerie, because I've tithed and seeded up to 35% of my income. So I went way above the tithe. But I'd say there should be a peace that comes to you about it. There should be a peace. I would think the voice, this may sound selfish, but the voice of spiritual protection and spiritual wisdom, I shouldn't use that word, should I? But just so as God direction guides you, just so. That's a, that's a hard question. And you don't have to pay all the tithe in one place, I don't think. There's times I've split my tithe, and I gave tithe to one preacher. I do, I do have expectations of gratitude. And that's, uh, that's been a disappointment to me. Priscilla said, Oh, God is good. Your soil is rich. Priscilla, I've been told that by several major preachers. I never thought about soil before until they started telling me, said, Every time we sow to you, we see a result. I've got that many times. Does the soil matter where you sow? More than we could ever imagine. Yeah, I do. Let's take it uh, normal. There's carpet here in my little office here at my house. There's carpet. How long would seed have to stay on there before it grows? I think it does. The first person that ever told me that was Oral and Richard Roberts. And they talked about soil being good. 
about their ministry because I returned all my uh, all my thousands of dollars of uh, royalty. Will Roberts Ministry recorded thirty seven of my songs, a lot of uh, theme songs on their TV. So I'd get big checks. I signed them back and give them back. Signed back of them, give them back. And uh, a lot of people thought I was crazy. But where I can so, where I feel a nudge from the Lord, Valerie, where I feel a whisper, I so. I so. I trust God, whisper. I remember the night at there at Rod Parsley's. I was speechless for a week, sick at heart, because that was all the money I had was eight thousand five hundred dollars. And God gave me a lifetime blessing. There may be two or three today. Maybe you sold a house and. Maybe you have the, the tithe to sow. If that's something God leads you to do, let me pray for you now. Father, the Sunday night I planted my savings, $8,500 to Rod Parsley. I never dreamed you'd give me a lifetime blessing. I never dreamed that Walmart would end up giving me thousands and thousands of dollars for my ideas. There may be two or three people who want to help me stay on TV and the radio. Honor them, Lord. Honor them. Father, I've asked you for 23 who will sow a $100 seed toward my nightly radio program. It's $100 a program for 30 minutes. Somebody may be impressed to pay for one radio program a month for me. That would mean the world to me. That would mean the world to me. Whatever you do for me, do for them. Father, I pray for a debt-free home for them. I pray for financial protection from any courtroom in the world. I ask you for financial discerning that nobody can ever trick them with a contract. And I pray for the territorial anointing, the real estate grace that you said to Peter, that you would give him houses and lands. Father, let every person that plants a seed today, let the anointing for real estate protect them in all their buying. Look at this for a moment. Cash App and PayPal, Zelle. Ask the Lord for the territorial anointing. Fourteen days. Fourteen days from the 112 seed. I never talk about that, but I, maybe I should. If you were tell, if you were talking to me saying. I would really love for God to give me a real estate anointing. I would ask you to sow a 112 seed based on the 112th Psalm for 12 months and document what God does. That's where mine came from. There's nothing in that chapter that talks a lot about that, but that's where I experienced the real estate anointing. 14 days after my six weeks, six and a half weeks. Don't know why. Just obey the voice. Obey his whispers. Brandy said, what have you learned lately that you uh, wish others would learn? Brandy, that's, a, that's, quite a, that's quite a question. Crooked people never change. Is that true? Doesn't seem to be from uh, the man in the tree, Zacchaeus. 
my experience has been that evil people, that evil people are clever. Evil people, Brandy, are so clever. And that someone that doesn't value your goodness is very evil. That's probably the most powerful thing in my mind lately is that my goodness is not admired by people that I love. Not everybody. But that's the biggest wake-up call to me in the last 12 months is that my goodness does not make evil people good. They actually think I'm an idiot and fool and that I approve of them. That's my thoughts. Brian Shutt says you were on spot for me today. Tyra, thank you for those words. With all my heart. For Celia, the 8,500 is miraculous. And it's worked for at least three people. One is Clint Ross, the pastor in South Africa. He planted the 8,500. It was shocking what God did for him. Silas Malafaya, the 8,500, a pastor in Brazil. My experience is that the 8,500 doesn't happen fast. The, the harvest doesn't come fast, but it sure comes. <laughs> Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Thank you. I would like for all of you to pray. I thought we had 15, but it turned out we only had... We've only had uh, three, three, four, five that followed through on the $100 seed for my radio. You all want to pray with me on that? Father, I feel very stirred about being on the radio in New York, on iHeart. I feel like it's the best decision I've made in the ministry for a good while. I've asked you for 23 people for one year to sow a $100 seed, sponsor, be a radio sponsor. Lord, I need 23 sponsors. And whoever those 23 people are, I ask you to give them the 100 faux return. In stunning, amazing ways. Amen. I want to say this again. I sure wish we had the the seed now telephone number. I am so sorry we don't have that on the screen. I I work real hard to get all that on there and somehow it didn't make it. If you can find that number I'd give Yeah brother, can you find the seed the seed now number anywhere? It says seed, S-E-E-D, now. And the first numbers, I think, is 844 or 850. I don't know. But I'm I'm sick to, here I am live, spending all my time here, and I don't have it on the screen. Please forgive me. That's shaky on me. Harold, Brother Harold, I love those words. Father, I pray or discerning in Harold Moore's world. And I ask you for three, at least two, but give him three trustworthy friendships from his seed today that he's sowing of honor. Father, you're showing me what I've never known before and that evil is anybody that doesn't admire his goodness. He's a rare man. Father, when I saw 
when I spent time with him, his kindness, his tenderness. He's not dangerous to anybody. He wants to bless everybody. Give him three people who celebrate. Maybe Chief John is one of them. The chief of police there in this town. I ask you to protect him. Brother Harold, the most important thing in my life in the last few days has been to accept Not rejection of your money. Nobody will take, everybody will grab your money. Nobody's against your money. But when your goodness is not admired, you've got a devil on your hands. You've got a demon-possessed person. They're slick. They're clever. Just know that. Anybody that's been around you, been around you for hours, and they see your goodness, and they don't admire that, They're as demonic as anybody you'll ever meet, as the one that shakes on the floor. Brother Harold, I pray that God expose anybody that doesn't admire your goodness. That's it. Don't have to say anything else. Thank you, Cindy. I love those words. I will say this, that your best harvest is often a person, not money. Your best harvest in your life is someone that will walk beside you in your assignment. I got to sing it one more time. I love the Jesus world. I love, I love the Jesus world. Oh, I love that. Oh, you found it. Hallelujah. Can y'all see that 855? So now. So now. The Bible 66 impact is really affecting me these days. Bible 66 is a seat of honor to God's kingdom of $66. There are 66 books in the Bible. And I'm putting together an e-book reader called Library 66. And it's the first 66 books that I ever wrote. It's an e-book reader that you can hold in your hand very powerful. You can carry it in the car during traffic jams. But every person who joins Bible 66 and says, Brother Mike, I'll help you teach the Bible as long as you're alive. And when God gives, the, gives you the 66, you sow it. But Bible 66, there's a number that says Bible 66. I don't know where that number is. It says by, it's a phone number, and it says Bible 66. I just remembered that. That's one of my favorite answers to prayer, is Bible 66 phone number. I can't believe I don't have it here on the screen. Thank you for being with me. I love your letters. P.O. Box 97, your letters. Keep us alive here at our ministry. P.O. Box 97, Colleyville, Texas, 76034. JoJo has the same birthday month. Yay. Thank you. I love you. And I hope you're listening to my radio program tonight. 8 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time, 7 o'clock, Texas time. And remember, every afternoon at 5 o'clock, Monday through Friday, every afternoon, 5 o'clock, 
you that are in California, it's drive time. You can listen to my radio program. Thank you so much. I'm starving. Did they order any food? You want to see? I am starving. I'll, I'll just order my own. I won't wait. I love you, family. I love the Jesus world. I love the Jesus world. 